say to people that things not going to turn up? Come and drive it. Simple as that. Just come and have a go. <laughs> My name's Clayton Jones, I own a Volkswagen Lupo GTI 2002. Um, yeah, what else do I say to that? Probably one of the most interesting things in my whole garage is this right here. The day I bought the car, I was 19 years old, saved up for a year or so, looked for a good nearly a year for the right car, found the right car, low mileage, full Volkswagen service history, drove it two and a bit hours home and then got 10 minutes from my door and this happened. Decided to drop a valve and engine essentially just let go so that was no good whatsoever. In a way it was a blessing in disguise because the paintwork needed some work doing like machine polish and whatnot, it started to fade and go pink so Got it in the garage for a couple of weeks, got all that done, and then got an engine for it. And yeah, so it gave me a bit of time to do stuff that I maybe wouldn't have done so early on because of I'd have been out driving it and just enjoying it. It went from stock power to what it is now. Over, oh, it must have been three years or so ago now. I'd done the standard stuff when I first got it, the, put an intake on a, a crappy one, um, but that was what there was available at the time. Put the 421 manifold on it, um, exhaust system sort of thing. It never had it dyno, never had it tuned or anything, and that just made whatever power that's making felt faster than the standard one. And then once I got into track days, I then wanted to, you know, a bit more power sort of thing. So I went down the route of putting bigger cams in, Piper 270 cams, port and polish head. Um, it's about it really. Light, light and flywheel, well, that makes a big difference to the car. Um, one of my favourite mods. Yeah, and then had it tuned by Wayne at Chip Wizards, who's the only man to go to if you own a Lupo GTI is the best mapper in the country for that sort of car. Went to here and made 169 horsepower and been great ever since. Yeah. Originally I was into all the, the show car stuff. Wanted to put it on Aeroid and all that sort of stuff, split wheels and whatnot. Never had a split set of wheels but I had a rare set of OZ turbines they were called. That was the route I went down and that always just looked nice because that was really low drove like crap because low cars do but at the time that was the thing and I thought that was cool and then started getting into driving a lot more with my mates and whatnot going on back road drives and that sort of stuff then a mate of mine started doing track days and he was like you've got to do these and that and that eventually got me to do one and that was it like I was hooked for life then just went through a massive process of just changing bits and bobs you know everything bushes went down one set of coilovers then to another set you know just everything was just improving I've done the side like delete on the front you probably see that it's got the the mesh grills on the front, that don't, they didn't come with that as a standard. The, the Lupo Cup cars that come out of the factory that used to race, they had that, so that's where the idea come from. And that's where my intake goes into, so can only help. My favourite part of the interior, I'd say, has to be the cooler work shifter. Changes everything about the car, completely different experience to the standard shifter. Just being up higher near the steering wheel, much better for downshifts. My next favourite thing on the inside, I don't know, you probably want to come around here for this bit. Okay. It's so, oh man, look at the state of my mat now, but something, something so little, but this. That's an OSIR extended accelerator pedal. So usually they don't have this part on here, this extended bit. That's, that's usually just a normal pedal, but that's extended, so it makes the biggest difference ever when it comes to heel and toe, and just gives you that extra bit of movement. I'll go to Nervo Ring a lot been over 10 times or so now and every time I'm there and I'm strapped in my harnesses I get to the barrier and getting reaching your card to the machine is always a pain in the ass so neat little idea I'll see of someone else I made this so now reach easily brake setup on the car is Willwood four piston calibers with Corrado G60 280mm discs Frodo DS 111 pads on it Motul RVF 660 fluid rears are just uh, Standard discs, just Brembo plain discs, and for the DS2400 rear pads, don't really do too much braking the rear end of the car, it's just mainly done from the front. White line rear anti roll bar, that makes a hell of a difference on a front wheel drive car, it just allows the rear end to rotate a bit more, gets rid of understeer, um, great mod. Suspension is KW V2 coilovers, probably the best thing handle on wise you can do to a Lupo, just absolutely transform the car.
Cool story I love about it. Just how much attention it gets, really. Anywhere I go in it, wherever it is, car events, someone always has something good to say about it. Or the amount of people I've had message me on Instagram and say, oh, your car's the reason I've got one now and stuff like that. It's just, just a great feeling, really. The reception has had on Piston Heads since I started the um, build thread has just been amazing, really. I've been at the Nürburgring before a couple of times and I've had people come up to me in person and say, They've had a, they've, they've read the build thread and whatnot, he's used to one off pissing heads and I just think that's all part of the fun. So I've been a member on pissing heads, I've had a look last night actually since September 2011. So longer than I've had the car, obviously when I was looking for a car, it was one of the first places I was looking for a car on. Always been in the Volkswagens, my brother had a Mark 5 R32 when I was younger so that sort of made me get into Volkswagens a bit more and then always thought the Lubo was a cool car, especially the GTI. Everything about it, just quite quirky, a bit unusual. I built it to be as good as a, like, a clear 172, 182. Um, and it sort of is, really. It just keeps up with most of them. Other than the ones that get like trailer to track days, you know, pure race cars, um, then they're like, a different league. But then so would a Lubo probably be, as if you've done that as well. But I drove there, unpack my stuff, sort my wheels over, get back in, put that music on, get Apple CarPlay on, maps on, and drive home in comfort, you know, wind the dampers down, and yeah. Oh, is there anything I don't like about the car? It's a question I've been thinking about for a while, and I honestly can't come to anything that I don't dislike about the car. If I had to pick anything, it's when the engine, the bonnet's popped, and the engine sits on the wonk. Other than that, because every time someone says to me, your engine's on the piss, your engine mount's broke, I'm like, that's just how they come. But other than that, I really, really can't think of anything I dislike about the car. It's just, it just does everything so well. There's one more thing that's in the pipeline at the moment being done. Um, that'll be revealed soon. But other than that, I'd, yeah, I'd say once that's done, I'd say 99% complete. Otherwise, it's, it's pretty much how I've always ever wanted it to be. I get asked all the time, do you want to own something else? And well, of course I do, there's loads of cars I'd love to own, but right now it's not the right time to buy something else. I'm still enjoying that. And I've always said to people, when I get bored of that, that'll get tucked up in the garage and I'll go buy something new. But I'm not bored of it, because I drive it. I try to do it at least once or twice a week, maybe sometimes once every two weeks, but just, just keep going out using it. Like, that's the main thing I say to people is, just keep using them, drive them, they're meant to be driven, don't tuck them up just get out there and enjoy them like if you want to do a lupo buy one now because they're definitely going up in value no question about it i'd get probably three times the value i paid for mine i reckon now and that's on over double the miles you know so that ain't a bad thing i know i spent a fortune on it but i don't do it for resale value do it because i love it but yeah i'll just say just do it and just do it now before things go stupid money if you want to check out my readers car thread in full click the link in the description below and while you're there, why not start your own?